Hi, my name is Mike Johnson. I'm Gulfstream's Director of Dealer Training. I'm here to take you on a personalized walkthrough on your brand new B Touring Cruiser. My walkthrough will cover maintenance and functionality on the coach. My hope is, is that we'll be able to answer the questions you might have before you have opportunity to ask them. And I'd like to welcome you to the Gulfstream family. Okay. We're going to cover some of the basic maintenance items on your coach. First and foremost, you know you need to have your oil changed every three months, 3,000 miles, whichever occurs first. Tire rotations as prescribed by your manual, whether it be Ford or Chevrolet. Um, make sure that you tire, check your air pressure, that type of thing before you leave. Obviously, this is a uh, Ford cutaway before you actually have it. You've seen this in the video previously. Now what I'd like to do is cover some basic maintenance checks that you can do before you leave on a trip or as you're getting ready uh, each day. Obviously you've pulled the hood release on the interior. You reach in, raise your hood, set your prop rod. Now there's some basic things under the hood that you can check without having to do much other than just view the open tanks which are plastic and see-through. Uh, on my right, you have your radiator overflow. This one you can tell where it's cold, there's a, a line, and where there's hot, there's a line. You're just going to want to double check that, make sure that it's where it needs to be. Next to that is your brake fluid reservoir. Again, this is one, it's see-through, it's got a full and a minimum line on it. You'll want to just double check that, make sure that that's in good shape. Now as we move forward, we have your power steering fluid reservoir. Again, easy twist off cap. There'll be a uh, dipstick on it, full cold, full cold. So you're going to want to check it cold. Make sure that you're in good shape there. Now, down inside here, just next to your air cleaner or your air nozzle, the tube where, that feeds your air in, will be your engine oil dipstick. This is one. Pull it wipe it, reinstall it, and pull it again, and that will give you an accurate reading to make sure that your oil is full. We'll then move to my left a little bit more. Transmission fluid. Use the Mercon, which is a Ford-based uh, transmission fluid. Again, that's their recommendation on the Ford chassis. Chevrolet will probably be the Dextron 3. Check it while it's running. Make sure that it's good and warm. Pull it, wipe it, reinstall it, pull it, check it. That'll give you an accurate reading. Next to this is your oil fill. They say use SAE 520 on the cap. That's what I'm going to recommend. This is on Ford's cap, so right here's your fill point. Back here to the rear, flip up washer fluid, easy to access, something you'll want to just check out and maintain on a regular basis. Uh, I recommend use washer fluid versus water in case you get into a cold area so it doesn't freeze and split. And finally, this is a non-maintenance Motocraft battery. The only thing I would recommend that you do is watch your terminals, make sure that they don't corrode, keep them clean, uh, make sure that you use it just like you would your normal car. That way you're not getting into uh, any issues with your battery. Beyond that, that's the maintenance under your hood. That's what you would have responsibility for. Anything beyond that does need to go to your Ford authorized service facility. At this point, we're going to move down the driver's side and go through the compartments. The first two compartments are actually storage, and there's a lot of storage in this particular unit. Now we come to the third door, and this is your LP tank door. This is actually where you would access to fill your tank, uh, as well as you're going to be able to see inside to your gauge. Again, this is something that I would say you need to have serviced by trained professionals. Uh, LP not only is an extremely uh, flammable gas, but also has the ability to frostbite very, very quickly. It's extremely cold. So I want to give those cautions that it be handled very, very carefully and that wherever you do have your coach filled up that it be done by uh, trained professionals. One thing I will make note of on this unit, as you're looking at it, you have your standard on-off valve. This is your fill point bleed off. One thing that's always nice is Gulfstream has both an internal monitor panel with gauge as well as your external gauge showing full, half, quarter, and empty so that you have two ways of double checking, checking your system. I just want to highlight at this point in time the warning label that we install on this particular door by the LP. 
that it's made for propane, not for natural gas, and just some other warn warnings that uh, you might want to be aware of. Our goal in this is to make sure that you're as well educated when it comes to the use of LP, LP appliances, as well as your recreational vehicle, whether it be a B2 cruiser or a scenic cruiser. We want to make sure that you're safe and have many years of trouble-free RV. Let's take a look at a few of the exterior features that Gulfstream puts on its B Touring Cruiser. As you can see, I've already put the key in. This is your exterior shower. It's a CH751 key. You open it up and you can access a really nice shower, pull it out, and now you have the availability to rinse yourself, the kids or whomever has come out to play for the day or the weekend before they get into the coach and bring the dirt in. This is a really nice feature. It's also a nice way to wash the dog, whatever you might want to do. Very simple to access, very simple to reinstall. As you're ready to go, put it in, lock it in, lock it up. Remove the key. Next, we have your 110 30 amp cord. Put in its own nice little uh, storage compartment. Again, this is your shore cord. This is what gives the interior of your coach its power, the landline, if you will. Uh, again, the door is made with an opening, so you're, once you've got the cord out, run it through, close and lock the door, and now you have a nice, neat, clean-looking exterior. We'll go ahead and put this away. Next connection we have down here is your city water connection. This is where your actual hose goes to for your city water. That way, you can connect it, and you're running off of... Uh, water from whatever source you've connected it to. The next compartment. This is your fuel compartment where you add your fuel to be able to take the coach on the road. We have here your exterior park cable and phone jack. This is where you'll hook it up and have your interior cable TV while you're at the park or your telephone uh, while you're at the park. So very easy to access and it's not that hard to hook it up. The compartment we're going to look into now is your wastewater compartment. This will be your black and gray tanks access. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Uh, notice the sign down here. This is not a storage compartment. As you can see, the black and the gray tanks are here. You've got your three inch and your inch and a half. Here's your connection for the hose and your valves, your dump valves, which you connect your hose, pull the dump valves and release the material into a proper release facility. In other words, uh, most any campground has have its own dump site as you leave. That's where this material should be left at. Another great feature Gulfstream gives you on this particular coach is a place to put your sewer hose, that three inch hose that gets nasty as you're dumping. We actually have its own compartment built right into the side of the coach so it tucks away neatly in there. When you're done releasing your waste materials, you just have, you have a place after you rinse it to slide it right in out of the way. It's closed up, it's not flopping and allowing any of the water or waste material to get on the inside of a compartment. Moving on to the next point, we're going to take a look at your fresh water fill to fill your tank, remove your cap, insert your hose, and fill away. Some of your local camp stores are where you purchased your new B-Touring Cruiser. They even make adapters that you can fit on and put a uh, standard fitting on there for your city water hose. Once it's full, simply recap it, and you're ready to travel. Again, we're talking about the storage capacities here. If you take a look, there's a pass-through right here that we put in for your convenience and carrying capacities. As you can see, we've moved to the passenger side of the unit now and we're at the rear. We're starting here. Here is your alternative uh, power source when you're not on a shore cord. We're actually looking at the gen set that's on this. Um, something that's extremely important for you to remember is this generator when the coach is in storage should be exercised twice a month an hour at a time under a medium load so if you're in a warm warm state run one of the AC units if you're in a cold state run the furnace maybe make yourself a cup of coffee or something in the uh, microwave however you choose to do it 
that will, I'll leave that up to you, but exercise the generator. What that does is stops the carburetor bowl and jets from varnishing up, keeps you from having to purchase a new carburetor at a cost from anywhere from $450 to $550, including labor. Just a little tip for you there to make sure that you have, again, a problem-free uh, travel with your generator. I do want to let you know that all B Touring Cruisers come standard with generator prep. So if yours has a generator in it, it was an option and it is an option either for an Onan 4.0 or a Generac 4.0. Uh, this particular unit has the Generac in it, but I wanted to make sure that you understood that generator prep is standard. So another nice feature that Gulfstream puts in, we want to make sure that you have the ability to run electrical appliances outside without having to have monster extension cords from the inside. So Gulfstream puts two G GFI protected 110 outlets right here at the exterior for you to be able to use and utilize your electronics or your electrical appliances right outside your car. We're going to take a very quick look at the exterior access that you have to your appliances. We'll start here with your water heater, move to your refrigerator, and then I'm not going to open your furnace up because really there is nothing in here that you can do or clean. One of the things I'll show you, very simply, twist your spring-loaded, open, let it fall. It's got a nice little retainer right here to hold you into place. I'd like to point out the water pressure relief valve. You'll see this on your home unit, your home water heater. Same thing applies here. With this one, you probably will see a little bit of dripping. That is normal. So if you see it, don't worry about it. If it's gushing, then yes, you do have an issue. Something else that I want to make known to you, if it's not working and you're just not getting anywhere, this is your reset on the high temp limit. Just push this in. There's a nice little button behind the black. You're not going to see the button, but you'll feel it click if it does go in. Beyond that, the only thing that you can do in here is just make sure that you keep it clean and debris free. There's no adjustments or anything that you'll want to do. That it all be done by a suburban trained technician and to make sure that everything functions the way it's supposed to. We don't want to uh, create any dangerous situations, especially when you're dealing with LP gas. Next, we'll move to your refrigerator. Simply twist, pull it out. I'll make mention here that they have this wire tied in, so this will hang very nicely here. What this wire, what this is, is your condensation drain. Inside here, again, we're looking at something that there's really no maintenance to. If you don't have 110 power, the one thing you can check is your plug-in to your access out here for 110 or AC voltage. This is definitively not a storage compartment. You do not want to store things in here. The only thing I'll say is keep it de debris free and clean. And we'll go ahead and put this cover back on. Just slides into place. Twist. Then you have your suburban furnace. Now I will say, as you're looking at this in the springtime, if you've had it in storage, make sure you look in the burn tubes here. Just make sure that no animals or anything have gotten in there and built a nest. If they have, have someone clean that out for you. Beyond that, there is no maintenance that you can do on it. So we're going to go ahead and move down more and we'll take a look at the battery compartment here along with the simple breakers that you've got. As you look in here, you're going to see your house battery. You're going to see your emergency start solenoid. Then you're going to see a row of breakers that are well marked for your generator, your hydraulic power, and your chassis. These are actually used as disconnects as well. So these are locations where you can di disconnect the power to the batteries, helping to maintain them and maintain their longevity. This is your battery compartment. The one thing I will say on this for maintenance, watch for corrosion on the tops. If they get corroded, clean those off and reseal them with a uh, battery terminal protector. And that's your battery compartment. At this point in time, I'd like to cover the use of the awning from unlocking and unrolling all the way through to storage so that you're comfortable with using your awning. One of the things to keep in mind, Gulfstream supplies you with this special awning tool.
Let's go ahead and move to the front leg here and I'll show you the key steps to moving your awning out. With your awning, there's a lock. Squeeze it in, you notice how the leg kicked out. That releases the interior leg from the exterior leg. Loosen up your thumb screw right here. Just a couple of turns and you'll see that it loosens up very, very quickly. Now you're going to take your special tool supplied by Gulfstream, grab the loop end, go up here to the lock latch and pull it down. You'll hear it click. At that point in time, it is now released. Now we move to the back leg and repeat steps one and two in unlocking the leg. Releasing the thumb screw. Now you take your special tool, reach into your awning and grab your strap. We'll set down our special tool, release that leg, and stretch the awning up to the desired height. Move to the other side and repeat that step. And just make sure that you get them adjusted equally. And take, put your extender out, tighten it up just to give you some support in case of wind. You've now extended your awning and can enjoy, and enjoy the exterior in the shade and comfort of the new awning on your B-Tour and Cruiser. Now, in order to retract the awning, we'll simply reverse the process. Release the pressure on your arms. Release this arm and allow it to come all the way back down. And while we're looking at this end, I'll show you why you can do that and not worry about it. If you notice in this interior of the track, there's an actual stop there that stops the outer portion of the arm from sliding all the way to the coach. So you can release. It's got a nice stop point and it locks. We'll grasp our retaining strap and we'll come over. Something I want you to see here as you're looking at this, if you get confused, the lock we pull, roll it down. Now you just take and flip it up. And it releases the spring tension and allows it to roll up. Hook your strap in, allow it to get in there. Pinch it so it locks. Tighten this down. Do the same thing on the rear. Pinch so it locks. Tighten your inner. That's pulling it out. Utilizing and setting it up for use. And then retraction for when you're ready to travel. This is the function of your awning.